Hey girlies, you know why you're here and I know why you're here. Let's just get into episode 7 of UK vs the World. So this week was the roast challenge and I kind of liked the format, how it was a wedding of Graham and Michelle, which first of all, ill, all kinds are wrong. And yeah, I just liked the different vibe of the roast. I don't think everybody rose to the occasion. It wasn't an amazing roast by any means, but there were some good moments and I think everyone landed at least one joke. Well, some of them were the joke. First up was Hannah Conda. I'm going to be rating these queens out of five stars. And Hannah gets a solid four. She did a great job. She really did. She set the tone for the whole evening. She warmed the audience up. She had some great moments and references like the lavender weddings. I thought that was great. And saying that RuPaul's system of pulleys and levers, <laughs> that was fierce. She had some great jokes in there, some good material. I don't think it was like really very original she didn't reinvent the wheel but you don't gotta reinvent the wheel i just would have liked to have heard a bit more originality in there and a bit more of what makes hannah hannah like just how tia did tia perfectly incorporated her humor into this challenge and i think hannah kind of just was inspired from a, a lot of different places i didn't you know i didn't get what made it a hannah conda roast but like I said, great job. She also looked like Liza Minnelli, so we love that, I guess. Up next, we have the posh French one, <laughs> Le Grand Dame. Now, I think they were very harsh on Le Grand Dame, with especially how they was reacting to her in the moment, because they were so deadpan with their reactions towards her, but I actually think she was quite funny. Now, no means a knock-out-of-the-park performance. There was definitely some flatline jokes, there were some awkward moments, and I think there were some jokes that just didn't land whatsoever or didn't make sense. However, there were some some funny moments the way she started it off classy elegant fashionable are all qualities michelle visage don't have yes <laughs> that was just funny to me and then how she reversed that joke and flipped it onto graham i thought that was really smart and um well oh, maybe she didn't have so many great moments because i'm struggling to remember them girl also her prince harry joke um the frosted penis flipping it onto frosted twat they screwed her with that <laughs> when she said frosted see you next tuesday i gagged that was so funny i thought that joke was really funny but they ruined it and basically by suggesting her to say twat because it's the bbc okay bleep it what's your problem girl do you know what i mean it, it was funnier you can't tell me otherwise. Overall, I think she did a decent job, but you can definitely tell it was outside of her comfort zone, so I can't really give her any more than a 2.5 stars. Life is short. Right, you know. And so is she, it's Marina Summers. Now, whilst I don't think Marina had the best jokes in this episode, I don't think that her jokes were like groundbreaking or really, really funny. What sold it was her personality and her presence. There's no denying that Marina Summers is just one of those girls that has the it factor, that has the presence. That even if they're not the funniest that day or their material's not the strongest, you can still watch them and be entertained and find great moments and find yourself just comfortable watching them. And she is that girl. She really is that girl. I T G I R L. But she looked amazing i love that she always leans into her filipino culture the filipino pride is so beautiful i mean i wish that i could have that but being from england i don't have that much pride not much to be proud of there i couldn't really remember too many of the jokes that she said other than the way she ended it where she goes to our extra special guest judge whoever she may be now that's not really anything groundbreaking but the way she said it was just funny it was brilliant she just has the charisma the cunts. That's what she has, honestly. Three out of five stars, just because I don't think her material was that entertaining, but the way she sold it, she made it her own. She girl bust it. Who's that? Is it me? A fallen angel, the reason for the season, Miss Scarlet MV. Oh, can we just take a minute? I'm so sad she's gone. I really, really am. Now, this was not a shining moment for Scarlet whatsoever. I don't think she should have been in the bottom last week, but so her track record wouldn't have been as bad, but hey-ho. She definitely deserved bottom this week, and I can't say that she was unjustifiably sent home. As much as I want to say it, I just can't. She deserved to go home this week. She didn't do great. Oh, Scarlett, you're breaking my heart, girl. However, she had some funny jokes. Speak now or forever hold your peace was funny. She just should have said peace a bit more like peace 
and it would have read a bit better. I think that was the through line for her performance. Her delivery was just off. Her delivery was not present. It did not get delivered. Nothing was arriving. What did she say? What was it? This is how much I've remembered and retained this the week's episode, clearly. It fell flat. There was no real personality injected into it. And when there was, it seemed forced. It didn't seem natural. And it was very, very hit or miss with the jokes. And nine times out of ten, it was a miss. Although I did laugh quite hard when she said, the incontinent Graham Norton. <laughs> I'm still laughing about that. That was a funny joke. <laughs> I shall be stealing that one. Um, but overall... I mean, two stars even might be a bit generous, but I'm going to give it a two stars out of five stars. My girl, I love you, but this was not your week. The question is about to be answered. Tea or coffee? I prefer hot chocolate. As Miss Conda would say, Tia absolutely kicked this challenge in the dick. She fucking ate. This was one of the funniest roasts I think we've seen in a little while. This was easily her best challenge performance all season she did not need any production rig in here oh, like i said earlier she injected her own personality and sense of humor and point of view onto the challenge and that's what really made it work it was so tear coffee stupid humor when she said michelle visage a french name that roughly translates to michael face we all know it michelle is a man okay michelle was michael marina really reminds me of life Life is short. Just her humor's stupid, but like it's so universal and funny that how can you not laugh? How can you not think it's absolutely brilliant? And then when she said, when I go, I hope it's instant. Just a home run. Just a fucking smash out the park. Five out of five stars home run. You felt instantly comfortable with Tia. As soon as she started, you knew she was going to kill it. The judges were rolling on the floor fucking laughing. It was just brilliant. She delivered it so so well her humor is so perfect for this challenge tense nothing more to say moving on to the runway this week category is bridal now looking at these as a collective it's not screaming bridal i think some people try to think too far out of the box and when you go too far out of the box sometimes you just get to obscure and irrelevant um, so let's get into these looks. Her Hanaconda don't, but yours may do. <laughs> um, Hanaconda's first. I, I don't, yeah. This look to me screams the most bridal out of anyone in this category. It's clearly giving bridal. I love the silhouette. It's pretty. It's fine. It's, it's pretty. I don't really have much more to say about it, to be honest. It is definitely a hit. Um, I can't not give it a hit. It's it's gorgeous. It's polished. It's put together. I'm just not that interested by it, but it is pretty. It's good for her. Now, for something a little bit different on the channel, since it's nearly the finale, I thought it'd be fun if I, instead of looking at the placements for this episode, we look at their track records throughout the whole competition compared to what I think the fair track record for that person should be. So in Hannah's case, the only change is on episode two, the ball challenge, I think she should have been bottom two rather than just low. But other than that, she ate this season. Her three wins were well-deserved. She was high in the Rusical challenge, which I agree with. She has done a really good job this season. She's kind of flown under the radar a little bit for me. I don't know why because she's been a presence and she's been doing an amazing job. I just haven't really noticed her as much as the other queens, but yeah, I don't think there was really any rigging for her whatsoever, other than maybe that bottom placement. But are you team Hanaconda? Let me know down below. Next up, we have Le Grand Dame. Now I can't criticize Le Grand Dame too much because in the last video, I did mention that she had already worn two white bridal-esque dresses before. So I think if she would have came out in that, I would have been more critical on her than if she came out in this, which she did. And I do love this look. However, bridal, I don't see it. It's giving Paris Fashion Week. It's not really giving bridal. I love the ruffling though, and I see the vision. Her explanation was wild about the sci-fi giving birth or something, I mean, mothering, I don't even know, but no. <laughs> that was too much, too far out of the box, but it is a great look. I'm still gonna give it a hit because I do like it, but the category, uh, no. Let's take a look at Le Grand Dame's track record. If you didn't work out from Hannah's one, the top 
row is what their original track record is and the bottom row is what I think their track record should be. Now, I don't think she had any rigging whatsoever. She started this season out so, so strong. She killed the first two episodes. She then started to fade into the background for me all the way up until the last episode. She's really been hiding out there in the background. I actually do think she did well in last week's challenge, but aside from that, she hasn't had any standout moments besides from her runway since week two, and that's really sad. I don't think she actually did that great of a job in the musical, to be honest with you. Her verse was kind of all over the place. It didn't really make sense. Her rap was good. It was a overall fine performance, so that's why I put her as safe rather than high. Other than that, no changes. Are you team La Grand Dame for the win? Let me know in the comments. Next up, we have another runway diva from the season. It's Marina Summers. Now, I love this look. This is stunning. I love her Filipino culture, like I've already said. The way she showcases it off so beautifully in so much detail with all of her references. Now, I would have gagged if she would have come out in something so fashionable and sleek and very on the nose with bridal. I think that would have been fun. Just to see, because... Marina's fucking stunning and I'm sure she would have looked like the only bride but I do love how she makes a lot of her runways about her culture and showing us who she is. She's done a great job of doing that this season. This look is a hit. We love you mother Marina. Now let's take a look at her track record. Marina free time badge winner Summers ate this season up with her free lip sync wins, one high placement and only one bottom placement, which in my opinion was unjustified. I think the bottom two could have just been Le Grand Dame and Scarlet for this past episode. I don't think Marina needed to be there. It was unnecessary. <laughs> I love Marina. I fell in love with her this season. Let me know in the comments if you are Team Marina, Filipino winner. Moving on to the last and most controversial finalist of the season, Tia Coffee. Now, this is an example of thinking too far out the box. Um, first of all, the baby. Why? Secondly, I like the wig and the makeup cute and i liked that she actually had a silhouette this time like i liked the vava voom at the hips do i like the costume not really does the fact that it's made out of lace does that make it the category not really i'm gonna give it a miss i don't really have much to say about it it's meh it's not my cup of tea <laughs> now tia's track record has been topic of controversy this season but I don't think she needed the riggery whatsoever to get to the final of this season. She could have done it off her own merit and it would have been deserved. In my opinion, she deserved three of her wins. The win that she didn't deserve was for the musical. How? Why? When? What? Questionable? No. I don't see how she won that challenge. She really had a lot to live up to for being the singer and the um, artist of the group. And she did not bring it. And she was stiff. She didn't do great. I actually think she was one of the weaker ones that week and should have been low. And then the following week in the dance challenge, girl, bottom two. She talked all that smack about being partnered with Le Grand Dame. Le Grand Dame ate her up. I'm like, no, sorry. Bottom two. But the rest of her wins, she deserved 100%. Even the Snatch Game one, which I know was contested, but she definitely was more consistent in the Snatch Game than Scarlet was, so I can't give that win to Scarlet. She deserves to be in the final. Let's cut the hate out. There was definitely some riggery going on. Rigor Morris, girl. Morris, who's Morris? Rigor Mortis. Should Tia keep the crown in the UK? Let me know in the comments down below. Finally, to wrap up this video, we have the incontinent Scarlet Envy. I love this bitch so much. Go and send her so much love. All these looks have a tendency to be tacky, but I think this was really great. It didn't look costumey at all. It actually looked high camp and really, really polished and put together. I loved the details. I loved the cape. I love that she went for a different approach to wedding. Again, I wouldn't have guessed bridal if unless she had the flowers in her hand. It would have just been Elvis to me. I get her concept and the vision completely. It is definitely a hit from me. She's always a hit, let's be real. We love that bitch. Oh, let's look at her track record because we have much to discuss. Now, I don't want to seem like a delusional Scarlet fan because I truly do try to be as unbiased as possible, but she deserved to win the musical. 
Her verse was so good. She performed it so well. Sure, maybe it was a little bit simple, but her vocal performance, her stage presence, everything about her in that challenge, I lived for. She should have won. Tia had no business being in the top. And also, she I do see people's point for her winning Snatch Game. I personally don't think so, but I do think she did a good job. And I also think she was overly criticised on the dance challenge. She had Teresa as her partner, who was constantly distracting her with the massive grin on her face for a tango. Look, please, like, she, she had a struggle that week. I don't think she should have been put in the bottom for it. And this week, it would have been her first time in the bottom. I genuinely think La Grande Dame should have been eliminated here. Uh, probably controversial, but brave. Um, yeah, I, I don't think Scarlett was robbed, but she seems to be fucked over a bit every single season she's on, and I'm tired of it. And that concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below who you're rooting for to take the crown also please subscribe we are so close to 2000 subscribers and i'd love it if you could join me on this journey it's not always going to be drag race videos but there'll always be some sprinkled here and there just just fucking subscribe what are you doing it's free and we love free shit love you peace out bye